Welcome back, everybody, to another thrilling example of the Q&A, or ask me anything. Actually, you can ask me anything. If I don't know the answer, uh, and I've done this for, what, 56 odd years, speaking to medical students, doctors, therapists all over the world, the best policy is always honesty. I mean, yeah, you can pretend, oh, I'm this big guru, I'm 80 years old, I'm world famous, I'm rich, I created a product called BioFreeze 100 years ago, which financed DMK partially, I've done all these things, so I have to know everything. Well, I wished I did, but I'll tell you one thing about being 80 years of age, you're still learning. I'm learning every day. I'm learning with this young man right over here, Dr. Lacande, medical doctor, MBA, uh, botanical chemist, bioengineer, and on and on. But what he is that he doesn't know, and his friends that I've talked to recently that know him very well, is a genius. He doesn't understand genius, intellectual quotient. I'm supposed to be a genius too. But my uh, intellectual quotient tests, which were revised at the Cleveland Clinic, uh, in Ohio just, what, three or four weeks ago, uh, is in a level called creative and analytical. Mm. That's me. But he is in so many other categories. So we really depend, I have to depend on him for the medical backup in things that I may not know about. I mean, I know about, but I don't know the cellular or uh, holistic or anatomical details. This young man does, as you'll see. Uh, so we're going to be talking about something that really is becoming very popular amongst the DMK people around the world. Not so much in Russia and in Ukraine because there almost every therapist is a dermatologist. So they know all of these things and do them all the time. But other parts of the world where there are advanced therapists like yourselves, uh, other type of practitioners for skin revision, they don't often think about this. And that is pre and post uh, treatments for surgery. Mm. Now, for a long time, I have had doctors everywhere uh, doing the DMK pre and post treatments before surgery. And why would they do that? Well, no matter how clever and good a plastic surgeon's hands are, he or she still has what they call judgment call. Mm. And judgment call is the art not just the academic of uh, creating an incision and then undermining and then laying down the tissue and suturing. It is a judgment call of where to put tension, how you move the SMAS around. All these little things go into surgery. And the blind side is how will the patient heal? Now, if a patient goes in for a facelift, and this happens daily all over the planet, Let's say they've laid out in the sun all their life, they're in their 60s, they've got skin that looks like they fell asleep on a chenille bedspread, they've never had any treatments or anything. The doctor will do them, but the, the fact that the scar ramification and all of the other things that go in with homeostasis, skin in homeostasis is at risk. And they tell them, because if you, if you ever have surgery done, they'll give you a disclaimer sheet this long. And you have to say, I understand this could happen, I understand, and you almost don't want to do it, almost want to cancel. It's like those drugs on television now, the commercials. They show lifestyle, and if you take this drug, and you're going to be wonderful and happy. But, and then this whole list of bad things that could happen, they have to say now, almost makes you not want to take the drug. Same thing with surgery. So we kind of circumvent all that. We can almost guarantee, and I hate to use the word guarantee, but it, to me, it means having success all the time. So you can almost guarantee, always could be exceptions, because you can't always depend upon the clients, uh, what they do at home prescriptives, you know, uh, all of those things. But if a client is having a DMK enzymatic treatment series, let's say, well, I like to say three months before surgery, but even a month before surgery, and all the right home prescriptives that go into skin healing, the surgeon's work looks better. And I have top doctors that are willing to say that. In fact, I have a clip that I can get marketing to find from my 60th birthday where a top plastic surgeon, Dr. Lawrence Birnbaum, actually is saying this to the public. So, you know, team, get that clip. You saw it at my 80th birthday where Dr. Birnbaum with the glasses was mm -hmm. saying all these things about the surgery is better because of what we do. 
and it is. Okay. And the reason why is because number one, healthy skin will proliferate new cells at a regulated rate, much better than skin that is not healthy. All right. And we do this by enhancing the activity of the Langerhans cells through our beta glucans. So whenever new collagen fibers are rushing to the surface to heal that breach of incision and undermining, uh, the proliferation of new cells is regulated, not rushing, because rushing causes a scar. That's how scars are formed. And we'll talk more about that later on when we talk about scar revision. But uh, so the surgeon notices all this. Also hematoma and slough. Mm -hmm. Slough is where when they make an incision and undermine it, let's say up in the temporalis area, they cut right through the hair follicles and the peripheral capillaries are cut through. Now, unless circulation is reestablished very quickly in a very short period of time post-surgery, that can create a slough. There's no reconnection of the capillaries, the hair follicle dies, and they end up, and I've seen this, you might have seen it too in some old ladies that have had facelift 20, 30, 40 years ago, it's kind of a balding effect mm. here, okay? That is, uh, it's just a partial, uh, we call it a slough, partial alopecia, not full alopecia areata, or totalis, it's alopecia areata. Sorry, get my little terms mixed up there. That could happen. Another thing is big hematomas. Sometimes mm. they take weeks to disappear, big, black, huge, horrible bruises, and and in a couple of days, they start to turn purple and then yellow-green, and it just goes on and on and on, and the poor client is packing makeup on. I would say that our DMK Foundation will cover that, but why cover it when you can get rid of it? Mm -hmm. And with our red vein cream, it's almost like a miracle. Boom! Those bruises, are because basically they're just big bruises, just start disappearing almost immediately. And so these kind of treatments and the enzymatic treatments help the surgeon both, both post-operative and pre-operative. Now we're going to discuss scar revision because that's one of the things that when students, including doctors around the world, come into our, our paramedical class and they're confronted with scar revision, it's scary. And I understand why because sometimes scars are very bad. You've got your cuneiform or acne scars which are like this. Here's the skin and they go down. We used to call them ice pick scars, okay? Mm -hmm. Those are scary. Uh, hypotropic scars, which are rig ridged up. Sometimes they can be linear <coughs> from a surgical procedure, or sometimes they can be from a, some other kind of attack to the skin and jagged. Then, of course, there's keloid. That is the hardest of all. That mm -hmm. is basically an ethnic thing <clears throat> that's very predominant in the black community. That's why a lot of black celebrities um, are afraid sometimes to have facelifts and things because of that keloid potential. I know one singer friend of mine, um, <clears throat> she had deep nasal labial right in here, very deep, and she could not get a doctor to do deep injections on her or anything because he was afraid she'd keloid. Sometimes they don't, but it's just a risk that they have to think about. And uh, some, t some Germanic skin types, I've noticed too, have that almost mm. smooth, rubbery mm. type of skin that scars very easily. You know, it's not, it's not indigenous just to black people. But anyway, we have to think about all of this. But fresh incisions from a surgical procedure, <clears throat> often the doctor will say, well, if I don't like that scar, I can revise it. And what he or she usually does after a certain weeks, months of healing, is they come back in, do another incision, and try to suture it better, and so on and so forth. Okay, like I said, judgment call in the head. Mm. And sometimes it works pretty good, but a lot of times it doesn't. Our method of revising, and we're gonna to talk to Dr. Lacande in a minute about this, is a more surefire method of a natural scar revision. Mm. And we've had, and, I'm, I, and they're gonna show on the this, on this screen here uh, some of our pictures from Ukraine that were really horrible. Mm. Uh, our doctors up there actually started out in Donetsk. They own a tra trauma center up there. Too bad it's not open now, but anyway. And when I first went in there to teach people in, in Ukraine, they listened to every word I said. I had to be honest with these people. These were brilliant, brilliant young doctors, had great educations, 
pulpit. I could not walk into these classes with American buzzword BS, just couldn't. Mm -hmm. I had to be honest and say if I didn't know what to do, I would research it and get a protocol and come back to them. And they trusted that. So they would take on these horrible, horrible accident victims that would come to the trauma center. And this one here uh, looks like Freddy Krueger. And this was the first successful one I saw. He had it on his whole side of face and up between uh, on the frontalis and all the way down in this area here, glabulous, just horrible, horrible scars. And most surgeons would have told him, there's nothing we can do. Maybe a skin graft, you know, and that would be huge because of the large area, but there's no way they could do another incision. It was all flying glass in his face from diving through a windshield in a car wreck, on a car accident. So it took a year to get the result you're gonna see, but DMK Ukraine pulled it off. And we have others from other countries as well. Uh, we have a huge book, a BNA book, that shows all of these from all over the world, in case you wanna call headquarters. I don't know if we still have it, publish it or not, but it is available. All right, so what we do is identify the incision, it, what type was it, where was it at, different parts of the face, even body like breast, uh, lift, or uh, which involves the anchor scar because they move the, literally move the areola up, that's in a lift. Uh, breast implant's a little easier because it's just the scar underneath because they're putting in an implant. But we work on that too and we've gotten really incredible results. Stretch marks, what are they? Straya. They're nothing more than a scar from inside out, either through hormonal changes in the body or rapid weight loss or uh, rapid muscle building with anabolic steroids. I've seen a lot of that happen. Those are scars too, and we work with those too on the body. So uh, getting back to the revising post-operative scar with Dr. Lacande, actually what's going on during the enzymatic treatments with those breaches in the skin that are induced by a surgeon's scalpel? Yeah, so um, uh, going back to little to the basic parts of the skin, so when we make incision or is there a wound, that wound or that incision heals by, we call it in medical term, by secondary means, means yeah. what? that the uh, on that purpose the, uh, yeah on purpose so the tissue what it actually heals any incision or the wound is fibrous in nature true and as it is fibrous in nature uh, it is different than the epidermis and dermal tissue because it's a fiber now to minimize that that fibrous agglutination in it or that gathering together the dmk enzymes exactly works on that point because now any incision or the wound can be replaced with the same tissue that were there. Ah, okay. okay. So that explains a lot. Yeah, so and that's why we say natural chemistry, DMK natural chemistry means what? That whatever we have been given, use that, it's very simple. But, yeah. uh, but uh, you know, it requires a lot of effort on the same note. So, uh, we have years together experience in all facial reconstruction surgeries, breast implant, breast reduction, breast enhancement, stretch mark reduction, everything. And uh, we have a very simple protocol, pre and post. So, what happens that in the pre protocol of the surgery, we are actually prepping up all the skin tissues well in advance before even the incision is done. That is the key. That yes. is the key. Yes, three months, one month emergency. Y yes. But at least three months. Three months. So we are prepping, prepping up nice skin, uh, nice skin tissues there. And by any chance, if there is a subdue inflammation, chronic inflammation underneath the skin, so you are not taking that chance, that inflammation to go high when the incision yeah, is made. Yeah, at risk of infection, yeah. Tissue, right? Yep. So our, our, our product like Betagen, Contraderm, Red Vein Cream, they are fabulous in terms of curbing down the inflammation as well as making the immune signals, as Dine earlier mentioned about the Langerhans cells, very important cells in the skin 
because they control the entire immune response of the skin. Well, can I just burst in on this? Yeah. All right, let's say that a patient has been on Accutane for a number of years oh. before the surgery. Let's say they were off even a year, still in the system. What Accutane does, and this is admitted on the pharmacopoeia that accompanies the drug, folks. Trust me, I've been against this horrible drug most of my life. Yeah. And in the old days, when it was sold, uh, it had two or three contraindications. Yeah. Now, <laughs> 20. Yeah, the entire laundry list. Because <laughs> yeah. yeah. they're forced to. Yeah. By, by federal regulations and other and EU regulations yeah. and TGA in Australia. But what happens when they take um, uh, Roaccutane or Accutane for a long period of time, it destroys collagenase. Mm -hmm. Now collagenase is the enzyme factor that depends, it kind of splits up collagen fibers and depends how many new collagen fibers are going mm. to the surface at that incision area. Yeah. Now, and it's all ascending proliferation by a rhythm. So when these new baby cells and new collagen fibers, etc., get up there, they remodel very nicely, mm. nice smooth, nice skin, no scar, nothing. Yeah. But if that regulatory factor is missing, boom, boom. they all rush at the same time, they yeah. overblow the site of the yeah. incision and you've got linear scar. Linear scar, yeah. and, and any scar what is a scar is basically the hypertrophy of a tissue. So keloid is what? Hypergranulation of the tissue. Yeah. So all this hyperproliferation, hypergranulation, you know, even hyperhealing we will call, that can be very well avoided if we maintain the tissue integrity before and after the surgery. The homeostasis. And, that home and that's how the DMK enzyme therapy along with certain products do definitely help in that. And then the another factor which is often ignored that any scar, the skin treats it as a mechanical assault. Now any mechanical assault, the skin will defend and skin will defend with the pigmentation. So you see uh, around the scar, you usually the very fine line of the very thick hyperpigmentation. Hyperpigmentation, yes. This thing. Yep. Reddish brown. Reddish yeah. brown yeah. and all. Yeah. So that is basically the inflammation. A lot of cytokines, interleukins, um, like inflammatory markers are rushing in there and skin hyperpigment. So with the DMK therapies, that is also avoided so that the scar doesn't yep. get hyperpigmented. Now, I have here on my loose script uh, from marketing, God bless them there. They try to bring up the points. Actually, this has nothing to do with what we're saying, but it has everything to do with what they're saying. It says here, bioavailable solutions that work with your body's natural chemistry. Yeah. Well, that's not a high point in protocol for pre and post or scar revision, but it is a big point because obviously we are telling all of the aspects of the skin kick-started into acting natural again. Yes. And this, uh, the only thing I can say about this is the enzymes in the skin. Uh, for many years, other companies have been buying our products and looking at the label. Oh, what is the secret <laughs> to the DMK enzyme powders? What's the, where's the magic in that? It has nothing to do with that at all. It has everything to do with the enzymes in the skin mm -hmm. that we kick-start with the treatment which means bringing the skin back to the way it was supposed to act when we were young. Yeah. That's what it means. We're not changing anything. Yeah. We're just bringing the, you know, if all of you watching this could imagine yourself as a nun in a French nunnery, the sequestered cloister sisters that never talk, they never go out in the sun, they cover their whole body, or even a, an Arab woman, mm -hmm. you know, in the old days. And a veal. They yeah. look so young, their skin mm -hmm. looks so great because they're never exposed to stress, they're never exposed to sun, never exposed to anything. Okay, that is what they're really doing chemically is maintaining the homeostasis yes. of their skin without realizing, <laughs> with no treatment. But nobody's going to do that unless you really are going to become a, an Arab uh, chattel or a uh, princess or a uh, nun. So in real life, in normal life, uh, yes, uh, bio bioavailable solutions are important. That would include the enzyme. And identify the enzymes that carry the messages across the cell membrane. Right. right. So in uh, DMK enzyme therapies, there are three sets of enzymes we activate or trigger. 
in the period of 15-15 minutes. That's why our typical enzyme therapies are like 45 Within minutes in duration. The first 15 minutes. And yeah. that is not due to that Dine wanted to be that 45 no. minutes because it is based on the physiological <laughs> activation. People used you know. to fight me. Why can't we do 20 minutes? My client doesn't have any time. Why yeah. can't we do 30? No, it has to be timed in 15 minute increments. It wasn't me, it was the body saying right. this is what right. has to be done. Right. So in the first 15 minutes of uh, uh, application, time, application yeah. uh, the first set of enzymes, which are basically we call digestase, means what it digests. It digests what? All uh, uh, reactive oxygen species, reactive nitrogen intermediate, superoxide, hydroxyl radical, singlet oxygen, all these are hydrolyzed. So these are all hydrolase. So because in all in in with all this radical our enzyme therapy adds the molecule of the water then it hydrolyzes now they are separate they are separate from the skin tissues they are separate from all the cell walls and all now they are free floating now in the second set of 15 minutes we have the set of enzyme called transferase yes messenger uh, messenger glutathione transferase uh, then cytochrome p450 system etc. You can find that entire information available in our manuals. Now in that transfer is all these freely floating hydroxyl radical or the inflammatory marker, abnormal cell infiltrate, pre-malignant cells, fragmented DNA particles, these are all like free floating, all these transfer is they conjugate with it and they make them rush to the lymphatic drainage. Yep. And the last 15 minutes is actually the lymphatic drainage that has been carried by two. It's called ATP binding cassette. Very nice term, A, B, C, ATP binding cassette. And the second one is a S transferase. So these two enzymes actually push all this conjugate, uh, conjugated hydroxyl radical into the bloodstream and the lymphatic drainage. And that's why you see most of the, our clients, after they take the enzyme therapy, they rush to the bathroom. Yeah, that's true. In, the old, in my old <laughs> teaching, I used to tell everybody, make sure that your client goes to the loo Bladder is empty, before, yeah. because yeah. afterward, they, sometimes during the treatment, in the last 15 minutes, they have to get up <laughs> like this. <Yeah. laughs> go to the bathroom. It's happened to me. Yeah. yeah. yeah no, that's, that, that, the last 15 minutes is, is the most important one. And we always tell our doctors and therapists, make sure that you observe the, mm. lymph, the lymph on the neck everywhere that you can apply it because it does do that pulsing effect, the plasmatic effect, and it's doing exactly what Dr. Lacande has said. Yes. Now, this is a one aspect of how the enzyme therapy works as a bioavailable solution to the scar revision. But the another aspect of the enzyme therapy, that enzyme therapy is re-establish the piezoelectric CD across the skin tissues. So collagen, elastin, keratin, these are all piezoelectric in nature. So they do carry some piezoelectric charge constantly on their cell surface. And the moment the tissue is damaged, this piezoelectric charge is changed. So immediately that has to brought back to the normal dipolar charge. And that's what the enzyme therapy does. Well, and that's why it, after the enzymes are removed, we're going into whole new teeth, teeth, teething, mm -hmm. <laughs> teaching. Yeah. I'm tired. Mm -hmm. I'm old. Mm -hmm. <laughs> T teaching method using the Langer lines. Yes. And how we apply product to the face. No more doing this, this, this. Yeah. Actually, to potent, it would be the best, yeah. or using our ther thermowave yeah. that's designed for this because it has the ultrasonic, it has the red LED, the blue LED, and everything to go and along with it. And hot and cold. And hot and cold, yeah. so you have many modalities in one yeah. little machine, but mostly application on the Langer lights. Now you're thinking to yourself, what in the hell is that? Well, if you sign up for the education, uh, you will get in your manual complete diagrams of the Langer lines of the face. Yes. And you will never ever apply products again to anybody after you've seen this methodology. Trust me on that. It's yes. completely new to the industry. It's not, it's not new to plastic surgeons. They use Langer lines 
Oh yeah, yeah. because to make a cosmetic incision. Yeah, when they make an incision. So they're yeah. very aware of all yeah. this. Yeah. Uh, but now we have put all of this knowledge in the hands of professional therapists. Yes. And they can do it too. All right, so conclusion, five minutes. So how do I do a five minute grandstand? Conclusion. <laughs> uh, conclusion is uh, simple that why we do pre and post surgical uh, you know procedure integrated with DMK enzyme therapies for this reason because we want before the surgery and post the surgery the skin tissues has to be healthy to heal very simple 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 yeah and they and they've told me over the years yeah. many many doctors that in their practice that they they feel more confident yeah because they have absolute trust that the skin is not going to show up with the horrible hematomas like before yeah. the horrible sloughs and and plus their client looks good already yeah so it makes them look good yeah. okay well um, we'd like to answer questions we encourage you to submit questions good questions uh, some people when they send questions into our marketing they don't identify anything. I got one right here. Yeah, uh, just, I'll just, as, just let me read you to this as an example. Can you do this after or before your PR? She probably means RP. Pretreatment done with microneedling, and we'll talk about that at another session. Well, do what? When you write a question in, Dr. Lacadi and I will be more than happy because education is power to answer. And don't ever think, oh, it's a stupid question. No question is stupid. Stupid answers, but no question is stupid. Uh, but phrase it so we know what you're talking about. If you're a DMK therapist, don't just start typing on your cell phone right out of your mind. Identify the treatment you're talking about, all of it, the case history, what the client is going through or whatever. Be specific with us and that helps us be specific with you. Questions. Okay, um, I said at the conclusion of this particular broadcast that when you ask questions, please be more specific uh, on everything. That'll help me answer you better because mm -hmm. I know a lot of people are watching something and watching us and then they're texting on their phone and they're not thinking that they have to frame what they want to know because we have no idea. For instance, this one from Beauty Hidden Gems. Can you do this after or before your PR pretreatment done with microneedling, or should you have time in between the treatments? I kind of know what you're thinking about, talking mm -hmm. about. Thank God I've been in the business for so long and, and dealt with so many people. But if you framed it what specifically, and by the way, I'm sure you mean RP, not PR, because we don't have a PR pretreatment, but you're talking about RP probably. Uh, I'm going to turn it over to Dr. Lacande about the microneedling. Now, before you listen to him medically and make a decision on your career, I cannot tell you what to do. I mm -hmm. cannot tell you what machine to buy. The only thing I can say about machines of any kind or devices is that, first of all, you make no money at all until that one's paid for, number one. And some devices are very expensive. Some are not, but some are, okay? So always think about that. Never become device dependent just because it's popular, all right? That's what a lot of estheticians do, God bless them. And for that reason alone, in some of our manuals, we do have protocol for microneedling, for uh, microdermabrate, and you know, all these things that don't do that much, if anything at all. But we have the protocol to go with them because we know that they want results when their clients are coming in drawn by, oh, well, we're offering microneedling, and it's popular, but they want real results, so we've had the protocol to go along with it. Doesn't mean I endorse it, uh, it just means that it goes with it to minimize the damage and to get a result. So you get your money, they get their money's worth, you get your money. Um, most of these practices are trendy. Nobody mm -hmm. thinks them through. That's why I'm going to throw this over to uh, Dr. Lacande. And by the way, Dr. Lacande, uh, who is a medical doctor, has not been in the beauty business or this business very long. I stole him from a very big company where he was a bioengineer creating uh, raw materials for pharmaceuticals and things all over the world. And I said, no, 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 you're going to work for me. I'm 80 now. <laughs> I'm running out of gas. I need this kind of brain. 
And so when he, when I show him some of this stuff we've been doing for years, like microneedling and microdermabrasion. In fact, I'm the crazy guy that brought mm -hmm. microdermabrasion into this country years ago, but that's another story. Um, he gives his medical response, scientific response, and, uh, and it's real. So having said that, so what do you think about microneedling, doctor? So microneedling is simple, blind mechanical trauma given to the skin. It's blind and it's a trauma. It is a trauma, I know that. Uh, and as uh, we know, uh, I don't know how many of you have seen the electron microscope picture of the skin. It is not looking like what we typically see in the schematic diagram of this is all crest and trows yeah. and it's not in layers it's not in layers so it's all integrated the <coughs> segments are integrated and when you are <coughs> pushing the micro needles in that you do not know what kind of tissue you are triggering and if is the constant trigger or the constant mechanical trauma given to the basal membrane. And that's what the microneedling logic is that, oh, as we initiate <coughs> or trigger or stimulate the basal membrane, it will hyperproliferate and generate a new cell. Sorry, Dine, but that's stupid. I know it is because you uh, know how I know. Uh, <laughs> <coughs> I've seen pictures in Europe and other places and here too of little tiny pearl-like granulomas. granulomas yeah. First thing I noticed when some of our people started microderma uh, needling, and one of our practitioners was an incredible therapist, and <coughs> she's going, oh, look what I'm doing, and she sends me a picture on, texts me a picture of a face full of blood, wow. a field of blood. Mm. But now there's a new one, even worse, it's called microchanneling. That oh. they're <laughs> That's the another name given to the known <coughs> deal. <laughs> and uh, Maybe so it's supposed to be able to put more nutrients faster oh into no. the skin like it's an artificial pore. Yeah. It's nothing like a pore. Yeah. It's, it's so a now what they are doing recently, they are combining the microneedling with uh, platelet rich plasma, PRP therapy or whatever. Now, Which is good. It's a good therapy. Absolutely. Yeah. So, so that with the PRP, they can reduce the damage done by the microneedling. But guess what? Again, the PRP is a, is a human tissue. Means what? It, is, it doesn't fall under the aesthetic criteria. No. It's a medical uh, kind of There's uh, no know, EGF. A arena. There's no EGF to that at yeah. all. Yes. Epidermal growth factor. No, so, dead. It's dead. So, to begin with, you know, let's not give any blind trauma to the skin. It's very simple and logical <coughs> uh, explanation. So, microdermation is a chemical trauma where the microneedling is a physical trauma. That's true. Simple. And any trauma by the skin uh, will be perceived as a trauma and skin will start defending. And then you will have long-standing pigmentation issue. Uh, microgranuloma, even macrogranuloma, inflammation, these will all trigger not, not immediately but after a year or two, oh, I got this melasma from where it has come. Well, guess your past work done on the skin. That is true, it pops up <laughs> later on and then they yeah. go somewhere else. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Uh, back to, uh, I will answer this to complete this question. Um, if you're going to do this, no matter what, uh, fine. But I would do uh, RP. Oh, I would stop microneedling immediately. Yeah. Wait, I would say how long? Two weeks. Yeah. Two At weeks. least two weeks, yeah. and then do the RP. Yeah. But don't combine them. God forbid, yeah. because that is throwing so much trauma at the skin, and it's confusing everything. Yeah. Yeah. Because you're dealing with a chemical thing yeah. as opposed to a mechanical thing, yeah. you see. Yeah. So anyway, next question. This is from Skin Health Aesthetics. Is there a way or a product to help hemosiderin staining from filler injections? Yes. DMK red vein cream. Red. Okay. Boom. Gone. Uh, usually it starts fading within a few hours. I would say maximum a couple of days. Really bad, bad cases, give it at least three days, but trust me, it works so fast. It's one of my proudest, it's a very simple formula. It's one of my first formulas. I actually did it for surgeons years mm -hmm. ago mm -hmm. in Chicago. Um, 
uh, it, it's just a special formula, and it does work on this very well, as well, well as other vascular and capillary disorders. Uh, would you, again from Skin Health Aesthetics, would you do microcurrent in the same treatment before or after muscle banding? Uh, normally, we do it before. Before. Yeah, it kind of sets up a piezoelectric yeah. effect, yes. you know, helps out. It's, yeah. an, it's an adjunctive. Yeah. It's, I don't think it's very standalone. Uh, I've tried, worked with this for years and years and years. Not standalone, but it works very well with the banding. Yes. So do it five minutes before. Yeah. In fact, we encourage to do that. Yeah. If you have the microcurrent, please do that before muscle banding. Technique. I always have it done. Yeah. yeah. I have Kyoko. Kyoko. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, she's a beautiful Japanese therapist, very well known, very famous. Her microcurrent, she does the chopstick method on me. Mm -hmm. she, point, she takes the two wands and she doesn't lay them side by side. She goes in yeah. and then like inside my mouth <laughs> and back in here. Oh, that makes sense. Because, yes. Uh, and yeah. most people are afraid to do that. Mm. But I'm not. Mm -hmm. no, she's really great. Mm -hmm. So yeah, about five minutes before. It can be a little longer if it's a large person and they have a lot of problems, you know, because you might want to address platysma and yeah. even pectoris major, all of these areas. Yeah. But okay. it pays off. So it does pay off. Yeah. That one I say yeah. kudos to. All right, uh, I guess all of these are from Skin Health. Uh, what would your recommended, uh, recommendation be for someone that has a response to melanotech range and can't use it due to crustacean allergy. I respond with itchy red hives all over the area. The brown algae in the range seems to be the trigger. Okay, let's take this apart bit by bit. Uh, normally, uh, a lot of companies or people would not even pay attention to this, mm -hmm. and I'm going to because I kind of sympathize with what you're saying here. Reactions can be bothersome and scary. You know, but let's let's see what's going on. And again, I don't have enough material here about all that you're using and treatments and everything. It could be anything. An allergy is usually swollen eyes like a frog, skin, you know, scratchy, you know, rash that has no nothing inside of it, just a lot of red rash, and can't catch my breath, mm. and sometimes boom, mm. pass out. That's rare and extreme, but it has happened. So basically, I think what I might be seeing here is reactive skin, but you could be allergic to something. And we don't know that yet because we don't have enough information from you, but we'd be happy to help out. Uh, no, it has nothing to do with crustacean allergy, no. unless you are actually allergic to shellfish or something. Yeah, yeah, now, if, you're, if that's true, <laughs> hon, I assume this is a woman. If it's not, sorry, sir, or hon depend. Uh, yeah, some people are allergic to shellfish. It's not yeah. that uncommon. Yeah, but uh, that is that is all internal allergies. That's true. That's and true. Something topical and that topical also at that below 1% kind of a solution. I no, really no, don't well, we haven't gotten to that. You're talking about the algae. You know, where she's talking about or he's talking about crustacean here. Yeah. Yes, you could have a crustacean allergy. Yes, it could manifest in the skin at some point. Yes, of course. Has nothing to do with melanotech. Yes. Because we, do, we use no animal or anything like that in our formulation. And I'm sorry about the hives. Loads and loads of, of beta gel and contraderm right away. And we do rip test. And, and yes, because with every formula that we do, Dr. Lakandi and I, uh, we have all the regular tests by federal drug uh, authorities and EU regulations and so on. But we also do RAPT, ripped. And that is not forced by law. We don't have to do mm. that. We could sell everything without doing that. But we want to see if there's an allergy potential. So we know how, because our, our products are very bioadaptable yes and we do not want any kind of thing beyond a normal reaction to bringing skin into homeostasis so we're very careful and I do pay attention to these questions uh, here you put the brown algae in the range seems to be the trigger no mm -hmm. I, I pulled up the our uh, deck ingredient deck this morning on that and I looked at it it's what 0.75 
0.75. And that one also, you are putting just two, three drops, so it's like a <laughs> the concentration is so minuscule. It's so uh, minuscule it, uh, as yeah. to be nothing. To cause, yeah, that kind yeah, of Because uh, melanotech is usually put in specific Yeah, and it's a spot treatment, Yes, yeah, right? a spot treatment, yeah. yeah. You're not spreading it all yeah. over the face into your eyes and mouth and everything yeah. else. So I, but if you were, <clears throat> earring obsessed is the business, I think. It's hard to read this. Uh, if I had more information, we could probably help you a little bit better, okay? Because I do want to answer everybody completely. And now the last one, or as we know, we have a few more. Uh, Amanda Carmilla, could this break capillaries and make them permanent? Mm -hmm. Amanda, could what? <laughs> <laughs> I, I happen to kind of know what you mean. You were counting that, weren't you? Mm -hmm. But what if I didn't? It doesn't say anything. Mm -hmm. Could smack in the face? Yeah, that could break the capillary. <laughs> <laughs> or hydrofacial, yes. No, she's, she's cute, or he. I, I, well, it's Amanda. Uh, very cute. Yeah, a cute little emoji here. Like, <laughs> A lot of people spend so much time getting rid of broken capillaries, it's crazy to see so many as the plas plasmatic effect. Actually, uh, th this is a good question, and I like it. Because years and years ago, people used to say that. When I first started out, therapists would come for training and they see this you know, road map of capillaries. Well, are, are, those, are, those, gonna, are those broken? No, 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 no. It's on the contrary, they're actually getting rid of. See, a lot of times, Broken capillaries you see in the cheeks or neck on very fair-skinned people, such as Ireland. We see a lot of that. Mm. Broken veins, broken capillaries. They're not all broken. <clears throat> Some of them are just, as the Germans say, for stuff or stuffed up. Because mm. you think of a, a capillary that you can view under the translucent layers of the epidermis mm. as a pipe in the sink in your bathroom sink, mm -hmm. you know how the pipe curves down? Well, the capillary loops are kind of like that. Mm -hmm. And sometimes at the, at the bottom of it, they become clogged. The blood is moving uh, very slowly through. The walls of the capillary are, are getting thick and also slow. So it, in front of this stuffed up area, it starts to swell up bigger and bigger because the blood isn't flushing through bigger mm. and bigger, and then suddenly it looks like a big swollen vein through the skin. Mm. And the enzyme treatments will flush that on through. <clears throat> and after two or three treatments, they're gone. Now, if there's any left, that means they are broken. Broken is broken, mm. cannot rebuild it, and only sclerotherapy, sclerotherapy with the needle, in my opinion, they claim laser, <clears throat> but old-fashioned sclerotherapy can remove that mm. old broken vein, okay? But no, 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 it's that plasmatic effect you're talking about, that is in fact getting rid of any sluggish, yeah. swollen capillaries. that strengthen capillaries. It strengthens yeah. the capillaries. Yeah. And then red vein cream, of course, yeah. double strengthens any capillary area, you know, that specific. So, yeah, but I understand what you mean, Amanda. When you see that startling roadmap effect at first, one of the first things people would say is, oh my God, is that breaking capillary? No, it's just the opposite. Right, so we move on to Sudi and Toto and Peanut. That's a very cute name. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I have a question for Danae. Does dairy really cause breakouts and acne? No, not cause. No, no. Uh, acne, cause of acne is all hormonal. It's a hormonal cascade thing. And I won't go into it right now, but we will do more uh, videos on acne. I think mm -hmm. I've done some in the past, but mm -hmm. we'll, we'll freshen those up. Uh, but it can exacerbate in certain cases. So you're partly right. Uh, sometimes dairy has the IGF-1 hormone mm -hmm. stimulation, which is similar to uh, pancreatic insulin thing, uh, which can exacerbate the breakout, sure. Uh, so my, I think the best thing to do, uh, if you're talking about teenage acne, because those kids are on usually fast food diets and mm. crappy, mm -hmm. <laughs> we gotta go, gotta run, mm -hmm. <laughs> have another Coke, have another what, Red Bull, Red Bull, and all that kind of stuff. Uh, yes, I would take them off of a lot of dairy during the first initial acne treatment phase. It's only part of it, it's not the cause, but it can exacerbate. Not everybody is dairy sensitive, but just to hedge your bets, to be a little more general all over the planet, 
yeah, take them off a lot of dairy and yeah. cheese. So and the that. casein, casein. Oh, the casein in, too. Yeah. That's in cow's milk. Yeah, and that casein causes inflammation. That's and true. as acne is an inflammatory yep. condition, yep. it can exact yep. a bit. Yep. Uh, so, it's yes and no. Good question. It, it, does it cause? No. But does it exacerbate? Yes. Next one. I'm going to let you answer this, Dr. Lacante. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this one, of course, this, this person is responding to Buzz popularity. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's not their fault. Mm -hmm. okay. they, don't, they don't really know. Well, we do a lot of dumb things. Yeah. What did I do yesterday? Ah, uh, yeah. What did I spend 400 bucks on? <laughs> yeah. And I should know better. Yeah. I went and had ozone therapy. Yeah. Very long process, Man. taking my blood out, putting it back in after passing it through an ultraviolet. I mean, done. <laughs> but I thought, well, this will give me more energy because uh, back when, my f when I was in my 40s, I was in Paris all the time training some uh, nurses from Mar uh, Marseille up at a doctor in Paris's office. And he was giving me th ozone injections, but not like this. It was yeah. just injections. And I felt a little energy. Mm -hmm. My skin got pink. So I mm -hmm. thought, OK, let me do this. I feel really weird today. Yeah. I'm not going to repeat this. Yeah. And then I came to the, the genius here, and he goes, are you crazy? <laughs> Does nothing. So I cannot laugh whoever's that asking me about redox molecules to address it. <laughs> yeah. Because, you know, I'm doing dumb things too. <laughs> but I'm going to let you handle that. OK, so redox is, is the coin term, which means the reduction and oxidation. Coin so, term. Yeah, it's yeah. a coin term. Made and up. So yeah. um, there's nothing called as a redox molecule. They are always the redox reaction. Okay, so there is a redox reaction, but not a redox not a molecule. molecule. Yeah. Okay, and all the redox reactions are physiological reaction. Entire biochemistry is based on the redox reaction. So when one particular reactant is getting reduced another reactant has to get oxidized because it's a simple hydrogen ion exchange. So one reactant loses hydrogen ion and one reactant gets or gain the hydrogen, hydrogen ion. ion yeah. So that's called oxidation and it's called reduction. So gaining of the hydrogen is reduction, losing of the hydrogen is called oxidation. Very simple chemistry, preschool chemistry, okay? So there is no redox molecule first of all. There are oxidant radicals which are called as a redox molecule. In fact, they are very uh, deleterious to the skin because all the oxygen, reactive oxygen species, singlet oxygen, hydroxyl radical, these are typically are called uh, oxidizing uh, molecules and they are in fact all leads to the damage to the skin. Instead of anti-aging. Instead of anti-aging. <laughs> so it increases aging. Oh my instead God. Instead of anti-aging. But can I, drink pero can I drink hydrogen peroxide and that's uh, a redox? <laughs> hydrogen peroxide. You get a food grade hydrogen peroxide, oh. but that is not for the skin. That is not, if you have some, uh, you know, pyorrhea in the yeah, in yeah. the dental pulp infections and all that. Well, they, then, but then they even claim uh, candida. Oh know, yeah. yeah, so it's like a more of a local kind of a disinfecting agent. We yeah, we use in a medical area now a lot of hydrogen peroxide for the but the disinfectant. But that has nothing to do with the aging and no. in, in fact it will accelerate aging. Okay, enough for that one. Let's move on to Tom Cruise. Is this really Tom Cruise? Or no, Tom Cruise fanatic. Uh, <laughs> really? Uh, At fifth housing? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Which is Mission Impossible oh, 4 yeah, or he's 5? A, or well, he's a predictable action hero. Yeah. And always with the great close-up, yeah. that type of thing. But he was much cuter in Risky Business than he is now, at least to me. You know. But anyway, <laughs> he's okay. Just mm -hmm. come on. Mm -hmm. I can't knock our top actors. They are what they are. Anyway, Tom Cruise Fanatic is asking about uh, tetrahexylodiesel ascorbic. Oh. Okay, is it effective as ascorbic acid? Well, first of all, it is a, a form of ascorbic acid. Uh, it's just a quick absorbing form. That's nice. Uh, stable. Stable's nice, too. Those are all nice. But let me tell you something about the words stable and unstable. Uh, to a psychiatrist, they mean bad things, <laughs> unstable. <Yeah. laughs> but to a chemist, no. Sometimes our unstable chemicals are the strongest ones. 
and useful. And I have mm -hmm. found ways to keep them slightly unstable, but at least encapsulated to the point where they can go in and go boom mm -hmm. and do the best job. When you modify uh, anything, especially uh, vitamin C, to become more stable, you modify its strength. So it, it, it's out in an oxygen atmosphere longer, therefore weaker. Yeah. So I would say this is not a bad ingredient. I find no use to buy it. To me, I think putting that on a vitamin C product just increases marketing potential. Yeah. I mean, there's people that make these things all the time to sell a product. Yeah. Oh, our vitamin C is to hex. Yeah, you know. yeah it's, a, it's a simple ester of hexadecanoic acid, which is a yeah. fatty acid, and with the vitamin C conjugation. So vitamin C is a water-soluble compound to make it lipophilic lipid soluble so that it, well, it can which go we do. well. Yeah. Which we do in other ways, many different ways in fact. So yeah. we don't have to go with the fancy kind of a thing. Okay, but you know. Yeah, to me this yeah. is a new buzz ingredient. It's yeah. not bad. Um, if you were making up some of your own creams at home, you know, and you put this in, that's yeah. fine. Yeah. But it's not, it's not a big game changer. Uh, game changer. Yeah. Thank you for that. Yeah. I should know that one. It's not a game changer. No, no, no. All right, uh, Kelsey, cat mole, best preventative skin care treatments. Well, the best preventative skin care treatment is to get your skin into homeostasis. You are naturally endowed by nature. Hmm. I assume this is a girl, Kelsey, or it might be a boy, I don't know. But male or female, you are endowed by nature to live 150 years. Cells are not programmed to die. They're programmed to stay as long as possible, yeah. alive as long as possible. And they are pro and the human cells. And they are programmed to do that if their environmental surroundings and everything is optimal. And the getting rid of the dead and dying effluvia, keeping the new ones on view, we're talking epidermis, a little bit longer or a lot longer. Okay, that is the best preventative. And in fact, a lot of women have asked me over the years on different television shows around the world, what age should I bring my child to DMK? Mm. I don't know, uh, let's say a year, two years, yeah. three years. You know, it depends on your, where you're living and what kind of environmental pollutions and, and solar damage and all that is present in your area. But yes, you, you teach this child about their skin chemistry as it naturally exists mm. early and give them the right products like we do early and you can prevent things uh, i can't i can't explain to you oh, let me put it this. let me use myself okay i'm 80 years old i just turned 80 uh, march 7th had a huge big lavish ball given to me by people from all over the world and dmk and my partner randy larson and my nephew and Everybody who's anybody was there. I felt completely detached because I don't see myself as king of skin or any of those accolades. It was all a huge, opulent Academy Award fantasy. You can probably look on my DMK and see the photos and pictures. <laughs> like, oh my God, <laughs> I never asked for this or expected it, but it happened. But having said that, I'm not dealing real well with being 80. Uh, I've worked hard all my life not to age as fast as most people do. Uh, and now I look at people my own age that are 80, even DMK people, and, you know, <laughs> and I go, oh my God, what happened? Because I, I didn't stop and think, even since I was very young, I was always doing something to circumvent the damage to the skin. Mm. I was also always taking care of it. As I grew older, I started adding certain things, like mm. I do um, uh, human growth hormone mm. injections every single day. I'm not saying you have to rush out and do that. It's real expensive. It's worth it. They have a spray that's cheaper, and I kind of go one month spray, one month injection, and I keep myself monitored. Uh, there's a lot of false stories about HGH, uh, stories that, oh, if you have a big cancer that's sitting right there, it'll grow it too, mm -hmm. be careful. Mm -hmm. Well, that's not entirely true, mm -hmm. but it does work. Uh, I've been on uh, testosterone since I was 50-something, okay? Um, yeah, because I enjoy life. Uh, <laughs> I happen to be married to someone that's 35 years younger than me. <laughs> God, if you could hear this. 
<laughs> spray starch, Cialis, whatever floats your boat. I've done these things and taken care of my body uh, with the treatments all this time. All this time. We have the new Stemzyme. I've had three of those. Mm -hmm. Okay? So what I'm trying to tell you, Kelsey, is we do have the best preventative treatments that I know because I've done them all this time. In fact, I've used myself as a lab. I've done a lot of my old treatments on myself first, and I've had some weird things happen. But uh, yeah, I, 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 this is like a commercial. I hate to say a DMK, but it is the answer for that. I, it really is. There may be other th things out there that are doing well. I don't know. I never look at competition. I don't see competition. I don't think of competition. I always think of a competition as this. If you have a goal, and my goal has always been to educate as many professional practitioners, whether they be medical doctors or therapists or whatever, the best way I possibly can based on the body chemistry. That is my goal. Now, if I stop to look around and see what other companies are selling or doing, what happens? I slow down. And I've never done that. I don't care what they're doing. I've had the press ask me, well, how do you compare DMK to so-and-so? Well, I don't. Whatever so-and-so is doing, as the Jewish people say, mazel tov, good luck, <laughs> I, you know. But <laughs> I'm doing what we're doing, and we are so blessed. We have practitioner at that huge birthday gala. And do go on the, the network and see the pictures. It, it, you'll be blown away, too. We had people from all over the world of all ages coming up to me and saying, thank you for my life. Thank you for changing my life. Thank you. Thank me for what? I was just a signpost on an aesthetic highway saying, go this way, not that way. That's all I am. I'm a catalyst. I don't create anything. I hate these people who say, well, when I created this product, you created nothing <laughs> or whatever power created us. All I do is observe and come up with education protocol. So the best preventative skin care treatments, yes, we have to take credit for that. If you find another one, as I said, God bless. Now, let's, uh, she also goes on, or he, will cutting down dairy and gluten make my breakouts go, well, no, not directly. Uh, as we said at the top of the show, uh, yes, it, it, in some cases, many cases, it could exacerbate it. But if you cut it out, let's say if you're getting DMK treatments for uh, acne and breakouts, yes, it'll help a lot to stay on both paths. Uh, but you can't just stop eating, uh, mm -hmm. you know, these things and immediately everything goes away. No. It'll help, mm -hmm. but you need topical treatment as well. You have to clean house too. Mm -hmm. And then once the homo homeostasis of the skin is back again, then it's easy to take care of. Then you can start your favorite cheeses and things mm -hmm. like that. Unless you're a celiac. Yeah. I mean, this whole gluten thing is nutty. Yeah. They put, I see a watermelon, it's gluten-free <laughs> in the store. <laughs> <laughs> gluten, there's nothing wrong with gluten. I mean, 40, 50 years back, there was nothing called as a gluten sensitivity. And uh, Never. Have, you, have you ever, uh, you know? No, only or, celiac. Yeah. And they're rare. Yeah. I've known a few. Or maybe diverticulosis or that. Di yeah, or, di yeah. There are certain conditions yeah. that you temporarily stay away from yeah. bread. And also, if you're trying to lose your muffin tops. Yeah. <laughs> which I, I only eat one bread. Sourdough. Toast yeah. in the morning. Yeah. Once in a while, I can splurge in an Italian restaurant or in France. How could you resist the bread in Paris? My God. All right. So, uh, oh, Kelsey. Kelsey, you got a lot of questions, kiddo. I've had tens enzyme facials with no plasmatic effect. Curious yeah. as to what it might be. Oh, let, let me start first and you come in, <laughs> Dr. Lacande. First of all, we don't do facials. Yes. Ten <laughs> enzyme skin revision treatments. Facials are pamper poo, this kind of thing. We don't do facials. I hate that word. I've said it for years, and yet they're still using it. Where does the face end? The face ends down here. Yeah. We treat all the way up. <laughs> all right. Uh, you've had 10. Okay. What kind? Now, again, Kelsey, you have to identify. I don't know what you had. Did you have enzyme 1 mixed with exoderma peel, which is the lightest one? And usually there would not be a big, huge plasmatic effect, although there should be a little. Uh, or did you have enzyme one with aqua de herbs and, ex and enzyme two with aqua de herbs followed by enzyme three and no plasmatic effect? That doesn't sound likely. Th that's the type that really produces the maximum. 
Or did you have the enzyme one with uh, desquamate? Mm -hmm. Again, that's a very strong treatment. You have no idea. It's not just a liftoff. Mm -hmm. We used to use it way before we use it as a liftoff, for those of you who do DMK. And by the way, desquamate was originally formulated by me to be used by itself as a quick cell remover. I never mixed it with enzymes until three or four years after. So there's a lot of things that are not taught now that when I originally did everything <laughs> that, you know, after you get so big, things get watered down. Um, now, what is your, what would you be, I, yeah. or, your, or whoever's doing you, it's doing it too thin, or what's your take? The plasmatic effect is of five kinds. So the typical plasmatic is a what? I didn't hear that. Is the different five kinds of plasmatic oh, five effect kinds. Okay, uh, yeah. one gets. So one we typically see in all our uh, educational material or on the pictures and all. It's an angiogenic means you see entire capillary network and all that. But that's not it. You you might get the interstitial plasmatic effect. You might get the osmotic one, which I get. You see my bulges yeah, happen yeah, after there's the yeah. osmotic plasmatic effect. Then you get the formative kind of, so entire kind of uh, skin feels like lift off, literally, it's called formative. And the fifth one is spongiotic. Your skin becomes literally like a nice sponge, firm yeah, sponge. Yeah. So you might be getting different plasmatic effect, what you are not referring to as a plasmatic effect. I know, I think, what I think we should do, Jay, and this is why I have to thank Kelsey, dot catmull yeah. um, we need to put this in our education yes. now people have said this before over the years but not a lot yeah. and i would address it the same way uh, i need to know exactly what one they have which yeah. type of enzyme treatment yeah. that helps but we should bring up those five types yes and then this question would disappear yes yeah all right so we will do that thank you for making us yes. add that to thank our education uh, Joe Decay, Aesthetics Elite. What do you recommend for treating under eye circles? My mother used to tell me when I was a little boy that if I played with myself, I would get circles under my eyes. <laughs> oh, <laughs> really? Yes. You have to come and forget. I come from, and, and I, this is the pol only political statement I'll ever make. I come from a very old fashioned Christian Republican family, no, but not. Bad Republican, yeah, yeah. no, they're the old Republicans, certainly not like what's going on now. <laughs> and they still are, God rest their soul. Or I don't think they would be if they stayed alive. <laughs> but my brother, who was at my birthday, definitely, uh, I invited, I'm a friend of Rick Rennell and his partner, and I invited them to my birthday, and they were out of, out of state. And my brother said, I've came to your birthday because I wanted a picture with Rick to show my wife. <laughs> Because he was ambassador to Germany, and he did a lot of good things for DMK when he was ambassador in Germany. And then he was national security, security advisor for Trump afterwards, and now he's lecturing and, and working at universities, pulling in six figures, which he should. He's a very smart man, good looking too. But anyway, aside from all of that, dark eye circles can be manifested by lack of sleep, by many things. What they really are, and I'll let you expand in a minute on this, Dr. Lakande. It's, it's a capillary thing, yes. okay. Uh, in Indian, uh, India, India, not American Indian, it's a genetic thing too. I see a lot of beautiful young Indian girls that have the sort of the darkness around the eye, which is very sexy and dramatic, but as they get older and have babies and pregnancies and menopause, it gets down to here, like raccoon. Mm -hmm. That's a big deal in India, and we've been working with it for many, many years. Now, the first, a uh, formula that I did for that was uh, urban pigment oil because it really did lighten the skin around those areas. And it, it took a long time. Mm. And I would tell them, do it three times a day, work it in good, and yes, it did, it worked. It still does, but we have much faster uh, methods right now. Itone, for yeah. example, is really good for that. Uh, Fibermax C. Yes you know, put very carefully with the eye tone over it. Very, very good with that. Melanoplex cream, uh, uh, super bright. Yeah. All of these things are good, not only for that area, but for every other area. Uh, sometimes if your first big DMK enzyme professional treatment will help to alleviate that a lot because it flushes a lot of old blood, old bruising out of the way. 
if it's really extreme, I'd be very careful, very careful, but you could even, on clean skin, dot a little red vein. Hmm. If it's a really deep, dark type. Yes. If it's just, you know, genetic, dark circles under your eyes, uh, uh, eye tone. Yeah. It's fantastic. Eye tone is fantastic, <laughs> coupled with the Fibromax or direct delivery <laughs> vitamin C. Based on, yeah. Well, that appears to be all of our questions. I hope yeah. we've answered it enough. In the future, people, please be more specific with yeah. your questions to help us help you. That, that's all I ask. Because sometimes just I'm the uh, marketing and our social media directors hand me this sheet and I go, oh, okay. And I do take each one seriously, so keep them coming. Oh, yes. And until next time, remember, what do I always say? Knowledge is power. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>